Competition is great. I don't want anybody to get me wrong. Competition can bring some of the best out of people. It can bring some of the best out of companies. It certainly can do that. When you have a benchmark to go up against, when you have somebody that you can compare yourself to, it can be a lot easier to quantify your progress or quantify your benefits, your advantages, your opportunities, your shortcomings, your weaknesses, than if you're just trying to gauge against yourself. But, as we saw with WWE, going way back into 2001, you've been basing yourself for so long based on the competition that you had, that once the competition goes away, as it eventually did because they bought it, what's next? And what will define greatness going forward? And what will drive you in perpetuity? And I think admittedly, we've seen over the years that WWE has never really fully acclimated and adjusted. They never have. Because without somebody else to base themselves off of, they couldn't sit there and figure out a way to compete against themselves and bring the best out of themselves and you know do the best that they can possibly do independent of any other factors that are out there. And I think of this from a real world business example. And I think about Blockbuster years back. You know, they're the kings of the brick and mortar uh, video rental business. And they get an opportunity to buy into this kind of startup internet based company called Netflix. And they don't do it. Now, you could come up with a variety of different reasons why they didn't. Uh, they didn't see past the trees, they didn't see past the current reality. They didn't understand how something like Netflix, a platform, a service like Netflix, was going to fundamentally change the game. And they were so caught up in dominating what they were dominating, competing against others in their kind of realm, in their wheelhouse, that they got so caught up in that, that when the opportunity came to move themselves forward really, realistically into the 21st century, they balked. And now you got, what, one blockbuster store left in the U.S.? I'm sure there are other factors, and you may feel like I'm oversimplifying it, but at the end of the day, maybe I'm not. The point I'm getting at here is, is that comparison and competition can be great to a certain degree, but at some point in time, it can become detrimental. It can become non-beneficial. And I look at AEW, the brand, the TV show Dynamite, the wrestlers, the performers. And I say, yes, comparison sometimes can be helpful. Can be helpful. Competition can be as well. But at the end of the day, if you focus on yourself and you do the best that you could possibly do and you worry about having your own identity, creating your own vision, kind of really having your own type of mission statement to base everything that you do off of that, that's what's going to help you when all is said and done. Like That's what's going to drive you the most. That's what's going to lead to the best form of consistent success regardless of other factors and regardless of what other people may perceive about your success or lack of success. You know, I think back in the day with Apple, you know, and Apple certainly had a period of time where they really, really struggled. You think of Apple now compared to what Apple was 20, 25 years ago, it's night and day. But, you know, way back when Jobs and Wozniak started Apple, you know, it was about they believed in the product. They believed that they could change the world. They believed that they could fundamentally make the world better for mankind. In some ways they did, in some ways they didn't. But they were less concerned about trying to have direct competition with other computer makers, computer manufacturers, and they were trying to create the best possible products that they could do. Sometimes they succeeded and sometimes they certainly epically failed. But it was that lack of worry about what others are doing, that lack of focus on oh, how their product is great and they do this, um, that has put Apple in a really great place here now in 2020. So I get really frustrated when I see all of these comparisons for AEW and the, the show and the this, so NXT does this, and if NXT did that, they're better than this. Just everybody stop. 
Just stop. It's not helpful. It's counterproductive. And of course, you got Uncle Dave Meltzer being one of the most notorious contributors to this crap. When he's sitting there and trying to assert that AEW is more popular on the streets than WWE is, what in the hell are you talking about, Dave? That makes no sense, Dave. You mean to tell me that a company with their flagship show getting less than half of the viewership of two other WWE programs, screw your demos, but overall audience, and has years and decades of name and brand notoriety out there, that all of a sudden this little upstart that can't even crack a million viewers is more widely known in the U.S. Like, that's not hate saying that that's not true. That's just not true. It's that type of biased, dumb crap that will turn people off from that product. It is that type of dumb, biased crap that will create this bubble that is built in an alternate reality that no way, shape, or form is based on anything close to logic. It is that type of crap that is counterproductive and does not help anything. It's the same thing again when you see Uncle Dave talking about, once again, his bias showing. Gee, imagine that. They need a finishing move after me. So, like, uh, the, the six and a half stars. So, if, if it was in Japan, obviously I'd have to have another uh, half to three quarters uh, uh, um, star. Uh, but you look at Uncle Dave when he sits there and says, you look at AEW. And they've got Cody Rhodes as the Triple H. <sighs> like, I, I almost can't even. MJF is the Rock. Moxley is the Stone Cold. Like, just full on stop, dude. Just stop. Like, he's trying to compare these three guys to these three guys, and it just. Screams of biased ridiculousness. If you want to say, hey, I see elements of Stone Cold in Moxley, I would strongly disagree with that. You know, you would be something you've heard about over the years. You'd see more of things, of elements of Piper or Funk or some Pillman, somebody along those lines more than you would necessarily in Austin. And it's okay sometimes you could have some similarities. You could have some comparison points with guys without saying this guy is equal to this and this guy is equal to that. That's just counterproductive. That's insane. Like, why would you say such ignorant things? And furthermore, why would people lend this any type of credence whatsoever? You're looking at some of these guys and you say, oh, comparison sake, you know, Cody is Triple H and da da da. It's also easy to forget that back in 97, uh, Triple H was playing second fiddle to Shawn Michaels in DX. And DX had significant impact on the WWF at the time. That is not relatable in any way to what Cody is doing with his shtick. Like, maybe you could say there are some similarities, some comparison points there. But as much as I dislike Cody Rhodes as a person... At the end of the day, can't Cody just be Cody? And let's see what he does or what he doesn't do before we throw out these stupid, ridiculous comparisons to God? Like MJF, young, talented guy. Man, even as talented as MJF is and as much upside as he has and as much as I enjoy him as a performer, comparing him to me what is the ultimate five-tool wrestler in the freaking rock. The Rock had it all. The Rock had everything. The Rock was truly a once-in-a-generational type of talent. And once they eventually started to figure out ways to bring that out of him, he showed it. And he is now the highest-paid movie star in the freaking world. And you're telling me MJF is that? Like, if anything, when you make a statement like that, it reminds you of just how great things used to be and just how crappy they are today. Which doesn't help to hear it now at all. Because those times that are gone are never coming back. And just reminding me of how inferior today's product is and how inferior today's talent is 
isn't helping the emotional level of investment in the talent that is associated with the product today. And then Moxley, like, it's just ridiculous. And I see all the time, like, well, they do this, NXT does this, or AEW does that. Like, who cares? Can't we judge a company, their talent, their product, solely based off of what they do or do not do? If it sucks in AEW, then it should also suck in NXT or WWE or ROH or Impact or anywhere else it happened. It should not suck because of the company that it happened to take place on their product. Crap is crap. Good is good. Great is great. Regardless of the environment in which it took place. Why do we have to sit there and put that freaking anchor around MJF's next neck saying he's like the rock? Is he? Is he really? Like, again, there could be some similarities, but, I mean, give me a break, man. Really? And at the end of the day, you don't know what MJF could be. Like, in five years, he might be an afterthought. In five years, he might be a big star. He might be a megastar. He might be off doing movies for all you know. In five years, he could surpass most of the people that I've named. Or he might not. He just might be a top guy for a secondary wrestling company. Like, I get so sick and tired and aggravated by this biased approach to trying to put down one product in order to prop up artificially the other. Or, more importantly, in the case of guys like Dave or Alvarez or any of these other number of cucks and clowns that sit there and let their bias show on a consistent basis with a company like AEW, or in some cases, depending on who it is with NXT, is we got to sit there and come up with all these justifications and excuses or biases to try and make something feel better than the other. Who cares? Who cares? It's not the Monday Night Wars anymore. People stop. Just stop. Like admittedly, we talk about ratings and viewership, and that's all stuff that carries over from the Monday Night Wars. And it's nice from a comparison standpoint, but does it really matter if both of those brands like if both NXT and Dynamite are able to continue on Wednesday nights for the next several years, does it really, I mean truly, does it really matter one week or the other whether this one wins in the 18 to 49 demo and the next week this one does, but this one has a higher viewership overall, this one has lower viewership and wins the demographic? Like who gives a crap? You might say, well, the advertisers do. Yeah, but again, now we're starting to get into the kind of impact wrestling, you know, the TNA Dixie Carter days of if the rating goes down a tenth of a point one week, it's, oh, my God, all hell is breaking loose, and we freaked out instead of trying to build the best possible long-term, excuse me, vision for your product and having the best long-term brand that you can and not always being so worried about everyone else does and worrying more so about doing the best that you could possibly do. Like that, that, to me, is the key to the formula for long-term success. You can look at WWE, and you can look at their product and say, here's everything that they don't do or they fall short on, and let's provide the counterculture and let's do that. You know, that, to me, is sensible. That's taking a look at the marketplace, understanding the competition, what they don't provide, and saying, hey, we're going to provide it, or taking a look at some of the things they do provide and say, hey, we think it is smart from a business standpoint to draw on customers by focusing on these things that they are not succeeding with. Like, that's okay. Or you start talking about this type of crap, like Cody is this and Moxley is this version. And no, he's not. No, he's not. Like, imagine the stupidity of comparing those three guys to the three of the biggest stars in the history of WWF. Three of the bedrock guys of the freaking Attitude Era. Like, what an insult to them. What an insult to Austin, Rock, Hunter. That's an insult. And what an incredible disservice your bias does to Moxley, Rhodes, and MJF. That's stupid. And this whole crap about they're more recognizable, like you just don't have any legs to stand on just because the Bullet Club or the Bucks sell some shirts at the Hot Topic or somewhere like that. Well, if it's only... Wrestling fans that actually know the product, watch about it, actually go in and watch the shirt, buy the shirts. That doesn't represent anything. 
Like, stop saying that stuff. It's off-putting. It discourages people from getting invested in their product because it makes them feel like they're stupid for not watching it, whereas you're not giving them a reason to actually really feel stupid for watching it. You're just kind of frankly insulting their intelligence and in the process making yourself look like a biased moron. And that goes to other fans too. Stop feeding into that crap. And when you see people like Meltzer or Alvarez or any a number of folks tweet some biased, distorted crap about AEW Dynamite or NXT, call them out on it. It's up to everybody to own that. It's up to everybody to ensure that this is a fair, competitive marketplace, so to speak. And we just don't need that. We don't need this type of counterproductive garbage. If AEW does something good, they did something good. That does not mean it's the greatest promo or greatest match you've ever seen. Don't be stupid. How are you expected to be able to take anything like that ever said seriously? Or the same thing with NXT. <sighs> Can we just sit back and see what AEW does in the next few months? See what happens three, six, nine, 12, 18 months down the road. Before we start rushing to make these types of statements or rushing to say these types of things that are just verifiably false and fundamentally untrue, I don't think that's too much to ask. And maybe it's just me as somebody who can enjoy certain things about a product, but also be able to see past his own biases to be able to deliver real feedback, real criticism, real critique. Uh, you should understand and know by now that certain individuals that this community really looks up to and really respects for reasons that are still unbeknownst to me based off of modern reality uh, are unable to do so. And you guys should be better at being able to see through that and you should call them out when they do this crap. This is ridiculous.